So hey, it's Rohan here, and welcome to today's episode of Analog Pixel. And on today's show, we have yet another review. Yup, a review. Well, it's about bloody time. I hear there's this rad new game everyone's raving about. Titan Falala? Titanfall. Titanfall is a video game on some systems that features giant fighting mechs and teeny tiny foot soldiers all fighting on one playing field, all trying to kill one another and trying to use giant fighting beast machines to the best of their ability and to the best advantage they can in order to rip each other's heads off and cause general death. Now most mech games are agreeably badass, whether it's Armored Core or Hawkin, I've had a lot of fun with them in the past, but none of them I have played so far have ever let me get out of my mech. Well I say none, but then, let's go further back into the past, say 1995. System of choice? I don't know, the Super Nintendo maybe. At this time there was a lot of Metroidvania shooters and 3D was fairly new, and games like MechWarrior was still fairly popular but nothing on consoles had really managed to mix the two in a very slick manner up until this point, and there was definitely nothing like Titanfall available back in 1995 on the Super Nintendo, except for this. Enter Metal Warriors. This game is essentially everything epic about mech-based animes, mixed with slick metroidvania levels and control systems with extremely solid multiplayer, and the ability to be a mushy human who can try and compete through ground combat, and sneak into bigger, more powerful mechs. You know that video that Machinima put out with 16-bit Titanfall? Well, this is as close to that as you're ever going to get to it being a thing. The game sets you off in 2102, where the government is under siege from Dark Axis, led by the leader Venkar Amon. These few remaining warriors are defending the Earth and are known as the Metal Warriors. You are one of these Metal Warriors and it's your job to go through sets of pretty well constructed missions in order to bring the glory back to your peoples or something along those lines. Yeah, it's pretty cheesy, but by no means terrible for the time, especially when you consider the time this was released and the system it came out on. The 90s was a cheesy place, now get over it. You begin the first level of this mech Troidvania game with your feet firmly strapped into the innards of a rather powerful looking mecha. That, to my pleasure, is red. This thing almost matches my PSP armoured core, which I have to say is nothing short of being the epitome of radical giant metal fighting robot radicalness. You will play about with the fairly intuitive controls at first, before starting to pretty much bomb your way through everything and anything that gets in your way, be it another mech, some squishy humans, or even the semi-destructible environment. This game seems to encourage you plowing through more things than can be destroyed by the average nuclear bomb. However, it is generally quite useful to dodge things in this game, as the attacks of some artillery, for example, are actually exceptionally strong and took me by surprise a little when all I had really faced at first were the pea shooters wielded by those squishy humans. One artillery gun almost took out half of my armour in, like, two hits, which is a massive contrast. Speaking of taking damage, every time you're hit by something, instead of using a health bar, the game actually reduces the colour saturation of the craft. I think it's kind of cool, if not a little strange. I kind of like to think of it as if the metal your mech is made out of reacts with oxygen in the air, and the only thing between you and the metal reacting is protective paint. I figure this probably means your enemy is actually firing flaming paint stripper at you to slowly chip away at your protective surface until your mech reacts with the air and explodes. Either that or it's just the developers taking creative license. Yeah, I'd probably stick to that theory. Once your craft is on the brink of exploding, it's probably a good idea to eject out and find another mech. How do you do this? By jetpack, of course! Yup, despite being a puny squishy human, this game manages to balance the game out by making you super nimble, allowing you to simply slip past your enemy, or shoot them with a pea shooter without getting hit before you find another overpowered mechanised beast to control. The controls outside the mech are both tight and extremely fluid, and they are a lot of fun to have a mess about with overall. However, the place where the game controls really shine is when you are at the cockpit of one of the giant shiny towering mechanised anime machines. Each different mech has clear and different movement and weight to them, whilst maintaining precise and fluid motion and never losing the feel of piloting a 100 ton death machine. 
and there are as many mechs to pick up and discover as you make your way through the anime-like story. As you progress, things become much tougher. However, the difficulty curve is nothing but fair. You are given a decent amount of lives, but your mech can take a fair amount of damage, so it's nice to know you don't need to be able to play a perfect game to be victorious overall. It's nice to play a game that isn't totally punishing once in a while, and just gets that balance right. Graphically, this game is nothing short of stunning for a Super Nintendo release, with a lot of things able to move on screen at the same time with a fairly high resolution sprite set and parallax used in many places, whilst maintaining a good frame rate. Nothing short of what you would expect from late Super Nintendo releases. The explosions, damage and other special effects are nice and sharp to look at also. The sound design in this game is also very well thought out, a lot of the sounds are crisp and satisfying, and there's a good use of the Super Nintendo's powerful sound chip. The final, and my favourite bit of the game, however, is the split-screen multiplayer. You go head-to-head -head in massive battles on very well thought out maps in a huge range of mechs, each map having different and unique secrets that are nothing short of classy. There is nothing like taking on your best mate in heated one-on-one -on -one giant mech battles, and then having to escape and run away from your opponent via jetpack, because they just happened to choose a much more suitable mech than you did. Overall, I'd say the game is a blast to play through, however you may have to stick to emulating this, as it's a bit of an oddity and it's fairly difficult to find online, especially for those living in European territories. I've seen carts go for as much as £120, which in my opinion is too much for any game. 2D Titanfall, or not.